Hello, everybody. Thanks. I'm really delighted to be here. I'm a law professor by trade and training. And when I first got here, I assumed, as most of us do, that the way, in fact, that we bring about change in government is that we make laws and we make regulations. That's what government does. And when I came in here with the goal of heading up this open government initiative and thinking about how we bring about large-scale culture change, creating transparency and participation and collaboration across the whole of the executive branch, we realized very quickly we can't legislate innovation into existence, that we needed a wider array of tools in order to do this job of bringing about widespread culture change. And in fact, it was the greatest learning experience for me to realize what that arsenal actually looks like, the real range of arrows in the quiver that we have at our disposal. And since our goal is to be as participatory as possible in how we bring about this change and involve everyone in making change happen, I want to make sure you too got some inkling of the lessons that I learned when I came here about how we actually make change happen in government. Because one of the biggest issues is that if we want to create government 2.0 or open government or we gov or create 21st century institutions, we need to know how to actually drive that change. And I want to tell you a little bit about how we do that. First, we make other kinds of law that are not just law, legislation and regulation, but also executive memoranda and executive orders that have the force of law and that use the bully pulpit of the presidency to set forth policy and principles. These memoranda and executive orders are often informed by ideas and proposals that come from the public. And so we look to you to help us come up with ideas for ones that we should be submitting and putting forward. We also spend a lot of time on creating events and speeches. So when the folks from National Lab Day wanted to create a nationwide initiative to actually match up volunteer scientists and technologists with schools to do hands-on learning, we worked with the private sector, the White House offices, the Department of Education, and National Lab Day, and other outside groups to launch the Educate to Innovate campaign and to create important speeches that the president has given in support of uh, STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. We also, in addition to working on speeches and events, we also help to bring about convenings. So it's one of the best things that we in government can do is to get different folks on the different sides of the .com and the .org aisle to sit down with one another. So you heard Todd Park, for example, talk about the Community Health Data Initiative, bringing together citizen coders and citizen innovators, again, whether from private companies or civil society, to move the needle on public health or OSTP's work with the FDA, bringing together pharmaceutical companies and nonprofits and foundations to create strategies for data transparency around pharmaceuticals and drugs. And the story you may have read in the paper just a week or two ago about this data sharing initiative where the government was able to play a role in helping to bring about progress on Alzheimer's research by getting people to sit together around the table. Sometimes that sitting down together is a little bit more formal. We engage in public-private collaborations and, again, want your ideas about how we can create game-changing policy together. So that when the Department of Education created the I3 Fund for investing in education and really investing in evidence-based innovations in education, they not only got together $650 million in public money for that purpose, but sat down with the nonprofit sector to create $500 million fund of foundation money, and then to work together to create a registry so that grant applications with the consent of applicants could be handed off from the public sector to the private sector, giving people two bites of the apple to get money to invest in their innovative ideas for education. In addition to grants and contracts, which you're most familiar with, of course, prizes are now becoming widely used in government. These high reward strategies sometimes bring about 40 times the multiplier of the size of the prize purse in innovation. And so we're looking again for ideas for prizes that we can fund, that you can fund, or prizes that we should make happen, such as, for example, the uh, HHS H1N1 hand washing public service announcement that gave the prize to the rapping doctor who's now become, uh, he's got a couple of follow on videos on YouTube, or my personal favorite, the one that's about why not washing your hands is rather like taking your toothbrush and rubbing it all over the New York City subway before putting it in your mouth. <laughs> in addition to monetary prizes, there are also challenges. Reward doesn't have to be monetary. So we can challenge ourselves and others, proposing strategies for government or other institutions to really call things into action. So for example, when the National Archives said, we need someone to help us transform the Daily Journal of Government, the Federal Register, from this, what you see on the screen, to this, 
which happened because three citizen coders in San Francisco took up the challenge and took up the call. Now with the challenge.gov platform that you saw unveiled here yesterday, now government has at its disposal the ability to easily set up challenges. And so we need to find good ideas for how to do that. Of course, being government, one of the things we do is we also make policy. We make government-wide pronouncements on how to get things done, like an open government directive that tells every single agency to be transparent and inventory its data and get it up online, to be more participatory and more collaborative. So propose a policy. Do it through one of the many and proliferating open policy forums, or do it with a memo. But tell us what kinds of uh, policies the government should be working on and how we should get it done in the way that you already did with cookies policy and we revised it, or with the Paperwork Reduction Act, which I know was talked about here, and we were able to get out a new policy. Another thing that we do that came as some news to me as an academic coming in from the outside is we do a lot of inter internal convening, interagency committees. So you just heard the Department of Education here talking about the learning registry, bringing together agencies to talk about how we can get out all educational content from government and make it accessible to people or the federal ideation community of practice, the group of agencies that sit down and come up with strategies for generating innovative ideas from government employees, or our open government interagency policy committee. You too can suggest a topic. Tell us where we need to sit down and come up with exciting and innovative solutions. Consider, of course, timing for your ideas, because one of the things we also do is work on budget requests, getting money, working with an agency, for example, to get money to fund a particular project or proposal. So you want to be sure to ask at the right time and to think about how to fund the good ideas that you have. Finally, people. Very important in getting this kind of innovative work done is thinking about who the people are to get it done. So don't just think about policies and proposals, but also think about the people who could get involved. And that includes, for example, people who could be brought in quite easily through the nonprofit sector and academic sector through the Intergovernmental Personnel Act. And finally, as a bonus, I promised a top 10, but I'll give you one extra, is platforms. You've heard lots of talk today about and yesterday about innovative websites like healthcare.gov, like the Blue Button Healthy Vet site. These are ideas that come from you and where we're looking for ways of using technology, again, to help achieve game-changing policy initiatives. So where do you start to get this done? Well, make sure to direct the proposal to the right person. And if there's a doubt about who that person is or how to make it happen, we now have in every agency an open government official who is responsible for participation and making sure that citizen participation happens across the agency. So get the proposal, get the p policy, get the suggestion to the open government official. And what should you send them? Well, whatever you send them, make sure it's short. We're ridiculously overwhelmed and have no time at all. So please, send us two pages, send us one page. And even better, send us a video, send us a screencast. The more you tell and re uh, show rather than tell, the more convincing and more inspirational it can be. Take just what we saw in five minutes about Pillbox, this completely game-changing and fantastic idea that's made visually compelling. So we need to know from you, whether through video or for audio, what it is, how to get it done, who the partners should be, and how we actually pay for it. In President Reagan, excuse me, President Roosevelt's inaugural address in 1933, he summoned each of his countrymen to adopt a covenant of service. These dark days will be worth all they cost us if they teach us that our true destiny is not to be ministered unto, but to minister to ourselves and to our fellow men. We cannot merely take, we must give as well. This was echoed again by President Kennedy when he exhorted Americans to ask, not what your country can do for you, but your, what you can do for your country. Well, it's time to serve and to get involved again. We again find ourselves in a challenging era, and we need you to participate. As President Obama has said, the challenges we face today, from saving our planet to ending poverty, are simply too big for government to solve alone. We need you, and I hope that through these 11 ideas, it might be easier for you to participate and get involved and allow us to change the world together. <laughs> so, uh, so a year ago, I, I was sitting out in the audience, and I found myself on my feet at the end of Carl Malamud's uh, talk, where he gave his rousing call to build the operating system of society, um, uh, and what has 
um, evolved into the Law.gov initiative. And I came up and was uh, talking with Tim during the closing session, and I said that my feelings were a mixture of kind of inspiration and shame. Um, you know, inspiration at Carl's ideas and shame that we weren't uh, implementing them and doing them um, from the perspective of being inside government. And so I, I described my personal Carl.gov project, which is to try to take some of the things that Carl's talking about and make them happen from inside government. So over the course of the last year, the, the focus has been on uh, uh, dislodging data, which is a specialty of, of Carl's, um, from uh, various agencies that are sitting on it. And as you've heard from uh, uh, Ellen Miller, we've got some uh, room for growth. Uh, and as you heard from Anish and Vivek and others, we've got a bunch of you know, continuing activities in that area. But so what I thought I would do today is just um, call out a quick challenge uh, to uh, my colleagues in the federal government for the Carl.gov project of the next 12 months, um, which I'm hoping is going to be uh, video.gov. So let me call out my special guest, Carl Malamud, to deliver this year's uh, dose of inspiration and shame. Carl, could you have a seat? So, so can, you, can you, Carl, just briefly describe what you, without any government funding or backing, have uh, gotten uh, digitized in uh, the area of video over the last, I don't know, pick your time period, a couple of months or a year? Yeah, it's about a year. I started writing away for government videotapes, and then I got NTIS, National Technical Information Service, and then the National Archives, and then the Pentagon sent me 500 DVDs, um, and I got an FAA library and a Federal Highway Administration library. We're up to uh, 3,971 government videos, um, about 3.7 million views on YouTube, the same amount on Internet Archive. And something really cool has been happening. People are grabbing the masters off our bulk server and using it to build their own YouTube channels. So we actually have a lot more views that we don't know about. So let's, let's tally it up. You said 3,000, uh, how many videos? We're 4,000 videos 4, right now. We'll videos. be 5,000 into the year is my goal. Okay, total number of views? Uh, we're at about 7 million people have, have watched these things. Okay, and so by comparison, um, let's take uh, just by, by way of example, and. We've already talked about this, so it's not like I'm asking you this question cold. But so let's take the Smithsonian institutions, which have put out a number of videos. Um, by comparison, how many views has the Smithsonian gotten? So they have 13 channels. They're only on YouTube, and you'd think the, they'd be on the Internet Archive and other places. But they're only on YouTube. They have 13 channels, the zoo, national air and space. They're about 2.5 million views, I think. So you are doing almost 3x the number of views with zero government funding and backing uh, and uh, uh, getting it digitized under your, uh, under your own initiative. Okay, so this is the inspiring and shaming uh, part of the um, talk where I, uh, I, I'd like to say that in a year's time, if the federal government has not uh, put up a video.gov site that is capable of delivering um, or, or getting at least three times as many views as whatever you digitize over the course of the next year, um, we will uh, uh, call that a failure. So let, let me help you get started. We've got about six terabytes. I'd be more than happy to send the government a disk drive, a seed corn. You can get started with that. All right. Well, subject to me uh, talking to the lawyers and figuring out how to not get jailed uh, in the course of accepting that, I hope we can pull that off. So this is the challenge for the next year. Uh, video.gov platform that will connect all of the disparate video archives of the federal government uh, departments and agencies, as well as uh, uh, easy access to feeds and uh, an inspiring uh, 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 presentation of live video feeds from across the government. That's the vision. Uh, we're going to try to pull it off, and we will try to defeat uh, Carl's uh, efforts and uh, number of views um, over the course of the next year. And so I'll be back in a year to report. <laughs> <laughs>